this is what you have to do when you don't want your hair get wet and it's raining in the swamp. You come on that top. Wow. What kind of snake is it? So this is a cook's boa. It's also known as a rainbow tree boa. Yeah. And it's locally known as a cascabel snake. Okay. So guys, I'm here at the Karani Bird Sanctuary and I'm going to go on a tour with Nathan Kalku, the Kalku brothers. You guys probably have known about them and, or have heard about them from when they were helping a lot of people during the flood. So we're going to go through the swamp and I'm going to capture as much as I can to share with you guys. I hope you all enjoy. So here we have Mr. Navin Kalpu. He is going to be our tour guide for the day. For today. So guys, I have a few rules for you guys. And that's basically for your safety. Now the number one rule is basically no grabbing of the branches. Now if you grab all of the branches, it tends to spring back and whip you really hard. Right? So no grabbing of the branches and we want hands inside at all times. <laughs> It's going to be a slow, smooth sail. It's not going to be rocky. But if I you think. guys were wondering what happened, a branch just hit me. Yes. So normally we'll be heading down the number 9 way, but I just want to go up a little this side. Okay. Because we have a few animals, center, lime around the visitor center. So we just reduce up this channel and see if any, any of them are alone. Inside that small channel to me. Oh, what's that? You guys have to do this. Species of um, very, very hard. This is a way to find. Okay. Could it not is it something that flocks? Right. <clears throat> is it something that's endangered or not? It is. Oh. One of the species that would be on the list. Okay, okay. Oh. The branch can afford. So what you're seeing is baby, those are yellow crown night herons. Oh yeah. So she had three eggs mm -hmm. and all three were hatched but normally when, when they get older there will be more one survivor. Oh. It's easily found for them and have their belly full. Right. You see them up on the top oh, there. Yeah. Right there. So guys, on my tour itself, I like my tour to be fun but educational too as well. If you guys look there, you guys might see. Um, a little eyesore to us. It's garbage. What you see in there, styrofoams, containers, bottles. Um, once it's, it can float, it's going to be down here. At this point in time, I try to bring the awareness of how our watershed or how the mangroves work. Those are the, the ones that are, um, it's more with say solid waste, the ones that can actually be float. What you see in there, styrofoams, containers, bottles. Um, once it's, it can float, it's going to be down here. At this point in time, I try to bring the awareness of how our watershed or how the mangroves work. Our watershed in Trinidad and Tobago is very simple. It starts on the northern range, makes its way down, and then ends up at the bottom of the watershed at the Carney Bird Sanctuary. When it makes its way down from the northern range, it has to pass through a lot of villages. Lots of villages. And when it passes through the villages, that's where it picks up all these garbage. I try to bring the awareness of not to litter. We had 
in the past so much garbage here it was like a mat but we had a program that was introduced into the swamp it was called the initiative of the CPEP marine program and the job was for the guys to go between the mangrove and remove the garbage they asked me to help run manage the program itself and, and I did that for six years actually but we all know after that they closed the program down we actually got it cleaned up after that period of years. On average, we would get anywhere around 60 to 80 bags of garbage a day. Continuous work, we actually got it cleaned up. And when it was time for maintenance and start beautifying the place, that's when they closed the program down. So I don't want that work going unlooked and for it to be just something of the past. And then all of a sudden, garbage fills back up the swamp. Try to bring the awareness for the community, for the for everyone in basically to know when they litter in these drains and streams, it ends up somewhere. It ends up at the bottom of all watershed in the mangrove. Why? Because mangroves are natural filter for the environment. If you guys look at the crazy root patterns, it's normally this way it filters out a lot of silt particles, which are basically mud being washed down from the northern range. But not only the silt particles. It also traps all that garbage too as well. Now these are the ones we can see with eye. When we test the water too as well, these get stuff, stuff that detergents, um, uh, pesticides that are used by the farmers and whatnot. So we try to bring the awareness of not polluting, not using these harmful um, chemicals for the environment and just bring that awareness and knowledge out for everyone. So if we cannot reach, reach, reach one person a week, a day for me, I think I'll get my, my target on the spot there. So just to bring the awareness of what happens and how the mangrove works. So the first thing is a natural filter. So in Trinidad and Tobago, we have three types of mangrove. It's named after our national colors, red, white, and black. Now the first one I want to point out to you guys is this one right in front of us here. If you guys look at it closely, it's just like a normal forested tree. It leaves the ground, but if you look closely by the root, there are certain new metaphors or little dart-like roots coming upwards. Those are called breeding roots on a high tide like now. They come just over the water to get oxygen for the tree. This soil here is a solid base. It's a lot of those um, trap cell decomposing organism. So there's a lot of gases here. It doesn't have much oxygen. So these trees has adapted in a special way to get their roots up above the water. To get oxygen for it. If we have heavy rainfalls or mud covering it up, it actually kills the tree because they can't breathe properly. So this new metaphor is found in the white mangrove, which is this first one that you're looking at here. And if you look behind him, you would see there, there's a darker tree to the back. It's more dark, brittle, and it has the same new metaphors coming upwards. Those are the black mangrove, the dark trunk ones. So we have black and white, and then the third and final species are these here with the crazy roots which are stilt or prop roots as it's known and that's actually the main species the red mangrove as we go further inside um, it's more closer to the ocean it's more closer to the sea and that species the red mangrove tend to thrive better in saltier conditions so hence the reason I stop here just at the beginning where the water is now mixing so you guys can see the three species Right? As I'm talking about that, I don't know if you guys notice, but we have two star ibis to the back there. Can you guys see them there? I'm looking. Now you can see the color from a distance. <coughs> but you might even be able to make out the, the shape of the bird. I so saw a caiman. You saw a caiman? Yeah, he was right there just now. And he, he went down? He did yeah, it yeah, I got it, but he went down. He went down but yeah. Cool. Let's see if you see a few more. <laughs> Actually, that's a termite. Termite, termite. And there's a little animal that tends to hang around those things. I'm keeping a, eye, a sharp out eye out for them. Wait, well, it's like an anteater? Yes, yes. Yeah. So I'll see if I spot one of those today. They're very hard to find, especially when you're falling. Okay. What kind 
of snake is it? So this is a cook's boa, it's also known as a rainbow tree boa. Yeah. And it's locally known as a cascabel snake. Okay. They're nocturnal snakes. Um, they're not venomous, so it's one of the constrictors that we have. After having a big meal, this is one of the habits it has. To come over the water edge, to get that warmth of the sun on its back and on its stomach. Right. After having a big meal, they'll stay on one spot roughly around five to seven days until they move. When they feed on, small birds, bird eggs, water rats that we have. Wow. a big one. Uh. He's behind the thingy. That is a crab over there. Look right there. Yeah. It's known as a rattler sonia. It's fancy name for mangrove tree climbing crab. Now if you look at its claws, its gundi and the tip of its leg, you can see that redness in it. Now most of the crustaceans that we have in the swamp are packed with carotene. And these are the carotene that the young or juvenile scalibus needs to build up on. So from their color to change from grey into red. Right? So this is one of the crustaceans that's responsible for the scalibus being so red. So we're going to put him back on the branch now and let him run up. It doesn't really get fresher than this, right? No, it doesn't. So weird, you could have told me that we went up to get oysters, I would have bring me sauce. <laughs> now, I don't know if the camera can see, but as the tide is going down, the oysters are being exposed. And the oysters only attach themselves onto a lot of the mangrove roots. Now, they live half of their time above water and then half of the time below. It's a cycle that they have to go through. That cycle, when they're under the water, is when they would feed and when they're above water is when they would build up that calcium and grow. Now we just pull one out of the branch here. They all have that oval shape and a little eye or notch here. I'm gonna place the knife there with a little wiggle. It should get in. So he's a little strong guy. Okay. Move the upper shell. That's the oysters there. I don't know if you want that demonstration of eating it. You want to eat it? Sir? We'll cut them off here. He's good. He's a good one. Thing went down way. It was actually built out of green heart, which is an important lumber from Guyana. Yeah. Green heart is actually a poisonous lumber, so it's something with sandy weather and termites that we have this one really good. But apparently, um, Australia termites are a little better than the Guyanese termites. They started to attack the underneath treaders, and with that, they started to get a little wobbly and weak, and they brought it down the case. So we had a few people that would not listen, they should not be living. And we have those one or two that would not listen to the rules and regulations. And 
they will try to go up on the tower. So hence that they said before somebody gets injured or anybody loss of life, let's bring it down. So they brought it down. But it was really really amazing view. I hope in the future it's one of the plans that get we look and rebuild that tower itself. So these here are called fiddler crabs. As you can see the male has these big gundy and while they feed on the algae there, if you can see it looks like they're playing the fiddle. So guys, today I'm here with the wonderful Mr. Navin Kalpu from Kalpu Karani Bird Sanctuary Ibis and Tours. So make sure if you guys are ever visiting Karani and you want to do the tour in the swamp, he's your guy. So, is there anything you'd like our viewers to know? Nothing really. Um, you guys got a little view of what the swamp has to offer and I'm glad Natasha gets to get a fast shoot today. So you guys take a look at the video, check it out. 
Remember, follow him on Instagram and Facebook. Bye.